Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the pre and public video discussion for Friday, December 9th, 2022. I wanted to do this video as premium public. I've been doing a lot of them on Fridays because it's a good idea to just kind of a show what you get as a premium member every day, but also to touch on some interesting topics because I know this is going to be floating around social media if it hasn't already. So Let's deal with some of those topics on the way. We'll touch on the GFS. We'll take a look at the weather pattern. And of course, the threat for snow for Sunday night and Monday for interior locations. So we've been talking about this for quite some time. Now we have the, the impact map out. So let's dive into some of this data. First of all, just to remind you, please like, share, and subscribe to this video and this channel it helps out quite a bit and of course if you're interested in more information just check out the premium consulting membership sign up right over there you'll be able to join for eleven dollars a month or eighty dollars a year that's up to you and we also have seasonal packages for thirty dollars for the entire winter season if you're just interested in the winter i know many of you are so What's going on right now? Well, high pressure is building into the region. It's leading to scattered cloud cover. We actually had a few flurries last night as one low pressure passed into our south and was basically getting sheared apart. Uh, was able to produce one lone flurry, I think, in northeastern Pennsylvania uh, and northwestern New Jersey. No accumulation, but a flurry did move through. And we'll be dealing with that threat continuing on this evening and also for tomorrow as these weak low pressure systems move through we'll discuss why that's happening in a second temperatures range from the upper 20s to lower 30s over the northern interior mid to upper 30s generally along the coast with winds coming in from the north around 5 to 10 miles per hour and take a look at our surface map and radar from weather tap you can see periods of showers off to our west off towards the Northern Plains and Northern and uh, Western Great Lakes. Nice area, low pressure, pretty vigorous, right? And we have our stationary front down here to the south, and we are pretty much quiet with tranquil conditions in place. But changes are afoot. What do I mean by that? Well, first of all, we have our cold air transport coming in from Canada. Plenty of cold air in Canada. It is just lodged up there waiting to come south. And we're talking about temperatures for highs. 20 degrees below zero, 30 degrees below zero. It's very cold air setting up in Canada. And we're just on the very edge of that cold air mass pushing south where you can see the influence of that cold air transport. Here's our pattern. Now, right now, we have our polar jet stream starting to produce a broad trough here. More importantly, the Pacific. We're starting to see our ridge building towards the Gulf of Alaska and our trough here is starting to establish itself around the Aleutians. This trough right here is key. And this trough is driven by the strong development of the uh, convection. Find it. There it is. Right around the dateline. Remember, I've been talking about this in the live chat and premium discussions and really going back to a couple of weeks when you start to see convection firing around the dateline trouble is afoot so there is the influence of that trough and that trough is going to start to interact with this trough polar subtropical it's going to start to set up our deeper trough around the Aleutians our ridge around the Gulf of Alaska setting up a very powerful negative EPO pattern now you're going to hear a lot of different uh, terms, EPO, PNA, NAO, AO, EIOA, you know, uh, all sorts of different anagrams. But the important thing to understand is the evolution of the wavelengths in the weather pattern. So a lot of people like to go with hard rules the reality is the atmosphere laughs at your rules there are good guidelines but that doesn't mean some funky stuff can't happen so what we're watching here is it is the setup 
of taking all of this Arctic air and sending it south towards the central United States first, and then eastward as we move forward. So this trigger, the reason why I'm showing you this is that this right here is the calling card for everything we've been talking about. It's December 9th now, and the idea was that by the 15th, we'd see this flip. We've been talking about that since September, and now you can see the actual start of that flip showing up in the Pacific. Meanwhile, while this is all happening, our southeast ridge that has been preventing some of the heart of the cold air to get into our neck of the woods is starting to get crushed and ripped apart. So again, these are all very interesting and important factors. And this feature out here that's going to be marching towards the Pacific, towards the West Coast and marching across the coast, this is a storm that we're going to have to watch out for. And it could be pretty interesting for the end of the week, next week. So we have a lot of stuff going on here. And we have a lot of activity. And you can see on the water vapor satellite picture, here is our vigorous short wave that is marching through. That's going to be heading towards our region uh, for Sunday night into Monday. And you got another short wave out here, another one out here. So a lot of activity. The subtropical jet stream sending the short waves. The polar jet stream starting to carve out and set up the cold air. And the pattern itself is starting to shape up pretty much as expected. Meanwhile, on the infrared satellite picture, you can see the strong lifting here in the Great Lakes. And you can see the strong lifting here over the Rockies. So these short waves clearly are pretty vigorous. Now, I want to show you some of the model guidance here um, for our pattern evolution. And uh, primarily using the European and European Ensemble guidance for the going forecast right now. But I know there's some interesting data that's showing up in the GFS. So I wanted to touch on that real fast. So let me just walk through the overall evolution of this pattern. And you can see the short waves all rotating on through. Look at this, it's like a bowling ball of energy. One, two, here comes the next one setting up. And then in the meantime, here's our ridge that starts to get established. Here's your Arctic air, piece of the polar vortex diving south. Nice upper level low heading towards 50 north, 50 west. Your ridge starting to build. And if you want to roll this forward on the ensembles, you can see the setup here. So this would drive Arctic air into the plains. You have your block here over the uh, in the polar jet stream over Greenland. And you could get storms basically marching through the southern plains and heading towards the mid-Atlantic coast. And what that leads to in terms of potential, well, we'll have to wait and see how the short waves interact. And that brings us to our separate systems that are going to be evolving over the next couple of days. Now, the first one that comes through gets sheared apart, falls apart, perhaps a few isolated rain and snow showers tonight into uh, Saturday morning, tomorrow morning. Our next short wave, this one's more associated with the polar jet stream. This dives south on Sunday afternoon through Monday morning. And again, this one notice is a little bit further north than what we were talking about a couple of days ago so your stretching in the atmosphere is not as impressive so the snowfall potential with this inverted trough is not as impressive but still some pretty good divergence and diffluence and oh by the way plenty of cold air to work with I and mean, this is definitely going to support snow in the air even on the coastal plain but the boundary layer is still a little warm because the whole evolution of this low pressure system at the surface supports easterly winds general rule easterly winds are bad news if you're trying to forecast for any type of snowfall on the coastal plain because it takes all the low level air mass from the gulf stream and the atlantic coastal waters into the coastal plain and that usually is able to push you up into the 40s pretty easily so that's why you never really want to see east winds you want to see northeast or north northeast winds where the air mess is coming off of uh, New England. So you have this setup setting up pretty nicely, and the short waves here involved here are uh, pretty vigorous. So it's certainly a strong short wave, it's just, it's just getting crushed. So as a result, what you end up with is this area of precipitation 
over the next 90 hours. Setting up here on Sunday afternoon with showers breaking out. And then some lighter snow. And then that dives south. And by Monday afternoon, this is all gone. So what could we really expect in this type of scenario? Well, you could see, you know, you will see about one to three inches of snow northwest of your of New York City. Okay, so we're talking about northwest New Jersey, Poconos, Catskills, uh, portions of the Hudson Highlands, portions of Connecticut. Again, this isn't a major event, but watch out for some of your roadways on Monday morning. They will be a bit slick, and most of the snow accumulation will be on cold surfaces. If you have any type of treated surfaces, you should be fine. Zone 2, about a trace of 2 inches because your lifting just isn't as impressive around northwestern, or should I say northeastern Connecticut. Then we go down to the coastal plain, mostly rain. It ends as a little bit of rain-snow mix, maybe even a very brief period of light snow because again your boundary layer temperatures and surface temperatures at that time are cold enough to support the development of snowfall uh, with temperatures in the 30s but if you're looking for accumulation maybe car tops if that and some grass but you know other than that most of this is going to be wet and then further to the south just a few showers no snow it impacts basically from 12 p.m sunday to 8 a.m monday so that's our, our first short wave then i've already got questions about this on the gfs and this is a storm that shows up next week and this is part of the whole complex of carving out our trough now is this realistic in the pattern potential yeah this could happen but how does the gfs do it well what it does is that it takes this shortwave coming in from the Pacific, marches across the plains, but sends it a little bit further south. It doesn't interact with this shortwave at all and sends the storm basically intensifying off of the Midland coast. Is it possible? Okay. What you would need for this scenario to take shape is that you would need to have more of a ridge out here in order to enhance the amplification of the long wave trough to open up the roadway so to speak um, and to allow this to dig and, and to move further south if that should happen this solution will be more realistic however when we take a look at the ensemble guidance and we take a look at the uh, european guidance that ridge is getting beaten down so the trough and upper level low is marching a little bit further north. And so you don't have that interaction. The difference here is basically where does this upper level low track? If it tracks towards the Delmarva Peninsula, then you're talking about more interaction with the Gulf Stream, potential for intensified storm, more colder air to work with. Because even in this scenario, you have plenty of cold air to work with, on the, especially on the north side of this upper level low. But the ridge dynamics over the west are not favorable. So I'm, I'm, I wouldn't trust that solution. And quite frankly, given the way the GFS is performing, I wouldn't be surprised if by the 12Z guidance you're talking about rain. So again, I wouldn't, I can't discount it out of hand, but I really wouldn't trust it. So let's dive into this forecast and take a look at what we are expecting. So for today, we have a scattered cloud cover, temperatures ranging from the lower to mid 40s for tonight into tomorrow. Look for the threat for a few isolated rain, some showers, but other than that, scattered cloud cover is expected. Look for low temperatures in the mid to upper 20s over the interior, upper 20s to lower 30s along the coast. For tomorrow afternoon, again, scattered cloud cover is expected. Can't rule out an isolated rain and snow shower. High temperatures in the upper 30s to lower 40s. On Sunday, look for scattered clouds in the morning, leading to areas of rain and snow showers by the afternoon. Look for low temperatures to range from the lower to mid 30s over the interior, mid to upper 30s along the coast. In the afternoon, look for high temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 30s over the interior and lower to mid 40s along the coast. I should point out, the model guys have had a very difficult time dealing with these short waves, so much so that our temperature forecast for this time period, about seven days out, were in the 50s. Now look what we're talking about. 
So you can see how the pattern's evolving and the models are trying to catch up to that evolution. So this is why you can't completely discount the GFS, but again, you need a stronger ridge out west to really support that solution. And right now we really don't have that. On Monday, you have your rain and snow in the morning clearing out by about 8, 9 a.m. Again, most of your snowfall accumulation will be over northwest New Jersey, Connecticut, the Hudson River Valley, uh, portions of the Poconos and Catskills with low temperatures Monday morning ranging from the upper 20s to lower 30s over the northern interior, lower to mid 30s along the coast. And those lower to mid 30s along the coast is what will support your transition over to snowfall with some of the departing rainfall but because the boundary layer temperature or the, the warmth of the street is still a little bit too warm which is why typically i look for winter storms after the 15th of december because of climatology because of that factor I'm not really looking for any type of accumulation especially if we uh, have any treatment on the ground by the afternoon that all clears out with high temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 30s throughout the region, so plenty of cold air in place. On Tuesday, high pressure will be in control with scattered cloud cover. Look for low temperatures, rather chilly, upper teens to lower 20s over the northern interior, mid to upper 20s along the coast. High temperatures will range from the mid to upper 30s. On Wednesday, look for scattered cloud cover. Again, high pressure remains in control. Look for low temperatures to range from the upper teens to lower 20s over the interior, mid to upper 20s along the coast. High temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 30s. On Thursday, things start to get interesting. An area low pressure and warm front will be approaching. This is the same storm that's showing up on the GFS. Notice the difference is that the primary low is back here over the Great Lakes on the European. And on the GFS pull up the right guidance here there it is the gfs has the primary low on the coastal plane so you see what that difference is so that's why there's such a huge difference in the uh, mild guidance here is the position of that upper level low and what that does to the whole storm structure so right now we're expecting rain on the coast a wintry mix over the interior it still looks like a pretty good snowfall starting to develop on thursday afternoon and evening look for low temperatures to range from the mid to upper 20s over the northern interior upper 20s to lower 30s along the coast high temperatures will range from the mid to upper 30s over the northern interior lower to mid 40s in your northwest suburbs and mid to upper 40s along the coast now thursday night into friday that low pressure system marches through again pretty good snowfall starting to develop for your poconos and catskills a wintry mix over the northwestern interiors, rain along the coast. Look for low temperatures on Friday to range from the lower to mid 30s over the northern interior, upper 30s to mid 40s along the coast. High temperatures in the mid 30s over the far northern interior, upper 30s to lower 40s, northwest, uh, the northwest suburbs of the major cities, and mid to upper 40s along the immediate coast. So again, the question for next week is where does the upper level low set up? Right now, I like the European solution a little bit more, mostly because of three reasons. One, the ridge potential and the ridge axis, what you really want to see uh, at 500 millibars around Montana and Idaho is not in place in any of the guidance. The ensemble sports more of the European solution, especially the GFS uh, guidance. It's usually a warning sign. And three, the evolution of the upper level low in order to dig in that respect would have to lead to a stronger upper level low in general coming into the west coast which we don't really have guidance for uh, and support for so those are the factors we'll keep an eye on it i'm not saying the gfs can't happen i'm just saying that there's a lot going against it so we'll keep an eye on that and uh as always thank you for following and uh checking out the weather discussions here and as always, stay safe out there.